digital search modeling is viewable on the internet on the National Science and Zero Security website. Can the cabinet member explain mm -hmm. why world exposed coastal areas will not close, park vehicles removed for their own space, and vulnerable assets reinforced well before the midday time on Thursday, 5th of December? Last, these are questions on the report. A question outside of that should have been addressed as an independent question to the council. So I'm afraid that one falls back. Councillor Jones, would you like to ask those to answer those other questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, at first we heard uh, simply to a very straightforward title. Um, we saw him think to a little bit tactical report that's written at the bottom of page 56, item 4. If you look to the second line, it makes reference to reducing workforce by nearly 25% in the past year. That should have said the past three years. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll deal with um, the, the question from Councillor Leach first. Um, it's a very good question. But the, the tail end of it was to ask me what, um, what advice and help <laughs> or suggestions I'd received from the members opposite. Well, the answer is none whatsoever. Um, we would hardly expect it in view of the fact that these are their measures, they support them, and they're obviously applauding what's happening, and I dare say they're very glad um, that these are, are the effects of the being inflicted on the people who they represent as well as the rest of us uh, because they're the policies of their government. So, uh, no, they haven't approached me with any positive, helpful advice uh, to alleviate the impact at all. But what do you expect it? From that, <coughs> those people opposite of the whole council? Um, I'll go next to Councillor Tony Morby. Um, question. <coughs> uh, this was on the under occupancy regulations, as the uh, party also like to call them. Yes, it is the case that uh, a gentleman who lives not a couple of hundred yards from where we're sitting now uh, did experience, experience a very extreme financial hardship, um, which prevented him from paying his rent because he was ill and out of work, and therefore couldn't, he couldn't actually match the requirements for the extra bedroom because he didn't have an income. But I think the question was, in what sense did ATOS get involved in this and help him at all? Well, he was indeed examined by an ATOS doctor who judged that he could function as a fit and agile young man. I think <coughs> from the forties, but the terms were a fit and young man. Shortly after that, he was admitted to Harrow Park Hospital, where I visited him with his stepson, who asked me if I go to visit him. He had several intravenous tubes attached to him. He was on the intensive care unit, and his stepson told me that he was not expected to recover. It was touch and go. He did, in fact, recover. He had a burst bowel. Atos described him as a fit and agile young man. He now has a bag, uh, an exterior bag, <coughs> and um, I find it very difficult to even speak of some of the things that have happened that have come to my attention in our locality relating to Atos. That particular man had given me his full permission to make reference to him, and if necessary, I'll well, open publicly if any of you believe me. Question from Councillor Phil Brightmore about the information communication uh, technology, the ICT update. Um, yes, although, let me just refer back to what we had this before. Back in 2010, Labour did vote to make a substantial amount of money for the ICT to be um, refreshed. Unfortunately, in the next uh, couple of years, the, uh, the incoming council didn't actually do anything about it, and that money sat there without being used. So now, 
the best service we can with the money available. And we apologize to nobody for taking our employment seriously. And we certainly don't apologize to people on that side of the house. We know what the attitude of the trade union is. Our attitude is a very different one. And we will continue to negotiate with elected representatives through their chosen organizations because we think it is the sensible thing to do for the market. <laughs>
move on to um, Paul's question about the, um, the, the um, youth forum thing. Uh, and, uh, um, we've had two um, youth uh, vice councils for the youth forum, um, and this is something that's gone on for the last 11 and 8 years, so it's not something that I brought to the law or anything like that. Um, this year, for example, the theme of the youth vice conference was respect. And this was identified all in consultation with 79 young people from youth clubs. Youth clubs and youth outreach provisions. And in addition to the workshop, the grant and facilitation in partnership with young people, there was an off-seat panel uh, comprising councillors and senior leaders from different organisations who took questions to the floor. Some people have identified during the workshop. Can I say to Council Gilchrist, thank you for coming to that um, session. Uh, we have um, also John Martin from the Police Authority, George Radine Robinson from um, Mercy Chapel, and a number of other people from organisations. Now, 71 people attended the Youth Five uh, Conference, uh, representing 14 secondary schools and three youth youth groups. Uh, interesting, the youth people, young people, late in conference files and comments included, I learned about tackling issues and making further understanding of the topic. A sense of solidarity among the general youth of public and issues related to equality <coughs> and respect. And they were made better aware of that how young people can have a say in all the things I can do. Um, youth Parliament, which was this year we have two separate uh, groups, New Parliament, which has more to do with the Permanent Guidance and the Annual Cycle of Council Meetings, and it's called a full council meeting chaired by itself and there of the world. And I know that I was very pleased with the, the nature of the debate this year. Um, and 49 young people took part, representing eight secondary schools and seven youth groups. Um, the event was positively rated by young people, and some of their comments about what they had learned through this. Other people's opinions are different. I learned that I may not like their opinion, but it's about me. It's not about me, it's about the world. And then you agree that, that the young people do really have a bias in how we were able to successfully debate a thought the problem. Can I also say that in so what really matters so what really matters consultation. This year, we did the most extensive youth involvement that I've known, and I'm really proud of that. Uh, we consulted with um, World Council Youth Policy Centres, uh, head teachers of primary, secondary, and special schools throughout the borough. And the consultation was also heavily promoted on websites such as teenworld.com, and through organisations such as Response, World Youth Theatre, the Executive Youth Board, Civic Award Group, National Citizen Service, Youth Schools Music Service, and Youth Vice Conference. Also, we involved the Children in Care Council and held a series of detailed focus groups with over 80 children who were looked after over this habit, were looked after by the authority, concentrating primarily on those options in the family and well-being directly. So I think, you know, the uh, officers who conducted that report did an excellent job with the young people as well. Yeah. Um, sure, um, we did have one of the um, motions before the, um, the new parliament was on um, the youth health, and because we haven't got any restrictions on what young people have put forward, there was a debate on that, um, and with a number of people who were there, they did well. It, I think that uh, um, perhaps all the information wasn't available at a particular time, but to be fair, they did vote 17 to 9 on that. But can I say that uh, what, what I did um, say to the young people afterwards, or a couple of days later, that no satellite news service was closed. Um, um, we also felt, and I said it was my opinion and the opinion of the council, that antisocial behaviour was called. And we also invited the young people to come and have a look at other youth clubs. And uh, I think most, the majority of them there were quite interested in seeing that. Because we want people to have all the facts, all the young people have all the facts. And can I also say, 
and I've been having um, um, lots of consultations over the last couple of weeks with um, American Travel, <coughs> and Ian Robinson, the chair of American Travel, about um, uh, uh, American Travel fairs or young fairs to say it might be in the future for young people to be able to travel to do so. I personally think it would be a fantastic, absolutely fantastic facility for the young people to follow. And uh, I, I think the majority of young people who, 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 who hopefully will see that when we have these uh, new and new 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 Thank you. 
to remove that cuticle facility. And so they got worried as well. And I wondered when along the path the public and the World Council, that captured uh, uh, in that part of the uh, World Council, will be brought into the discussion and taking place in order to make sure that whoever is getting to this is taking into account the worries and concerns of the national public there. Certainly when the redevelopment of the right to the place, there is a very wide scale of consultation and public meetings. But at the moment we can get no definite information at all. And quite simply I want to know when this must be brought up and consultation will take place. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I ask Pat Ackett a question regarding item 334?